This is the Lamzu Atlantis in the Miami colorway. Is it worth the 90 bucks from this brand that came out of the blue called Lamzu? Well, we're going to talk about that today. But before we do so, hit the like button and subscribe button down below. Let's now look at the unboxing experience of the Lambs of Atlantis. And let me tell you something. In my opinion, it's an S tier experience. I do not think that there's any other mouse on the market that beats just how nice the experience is of unboxing this mouse. I do want to give a quick shout out to Jordan Madison for selling me the mouse on r slash Morrow's Market. Really appreciate it. As we get into the unboxing experience, you're going to see that the cover of the box slides off with a very nice, precise thud and the box itself is like a book you open it up and on the right side you will see that the mouse is stored there and on top of the mouse is also the usb dongle now when we get on the left side that's where things get interesting that's where all the accessories are you first see a velvety velour bag and underneath it is lambzu's color matched grips for the miami colorway inside the bag is a nice color matched baby blue usb-c cable and what's really cool about this cable is that they have given it a nice little angle on the connection piece to the mouse itself, meaning you're never going to have a lot of tension on the mouse when it's in wired mode. The next thing in the bag is a quick instruction guide for the mouse. And then you have an extra pair of the PTFE feet, which in my opinion, rival the quality of core pads. And lastly, there's a really nice aluminum colored USB little dongle. I found that very nice and premium look. So overall, the experience of the unboxing is very nice. I've unboxed a lot of mice and I have to tell you, I think that this mouse beats every other mouse when it comes to the unboxing experience. What are the technical specs of this mouse? Well, firstly, it has the leading edge in sensor tech, which is the POP 3395 sensor. It has up to a thousand hertz pulling rate. You can set the DPI like well over 26,000, but we all know no one plays at that high of a DPI. That's just insane. It also has a battery that's supposed to last for 70 hours and in my experience it definitely did so i've had the mouse now for three months and in that time period i've only needed to charge it for only a handful of times so i can definitely say that this is a very nice long-lasting wireless mouse now on top of that they do advertise that the lambs of atlantis comes in at 55 grams and on my weighing scale it is precisely that the coolest thing about the weight of this mouse is that i do not feel any compromise with regards to the structural integrity of the mouth this mouse feels solid like i can just press it on the sides and i have no fear that this is going to just crush in my hands in fact when i wiggle it side to side or shake it aggressively i barely hear any wiggling in the internals the scroll wheel maybe just a little bit because it's a scroll wheel but outside of that i'm super impressed with this mouse's quality and I just have to give them like mad respect for this. For their first mouse, they have gone all out and made a fantastically well-built mouse and under the $100 price point. The mouse also has TTC Gold switches. And honestly, they're just the best sounding switches. Here's what they sound like. In my opinion, not only do they sound nice, they feel really good. They're probably some of the best feeling switches that I've used on mice. Specs out of the way, let's not go to the hand cam and I'll share my experience using the mouse. <laughs> Editor Mango here, just wanna quickly let y'all know at 3 a.m. that mangotalkstech.com has been created. Guys, quick interruption of the interruption, the actual domain name it is ieatmangos.com. So check it out. All my cool wallpapers will be up here, including this cool modern minimal art that I've created. They're very pretty. Uh, I also have this 3D brain abstract thingy I created in Blender looks really good on OLED devices. And I also have these isometric mangoes. Juicy, ain't it? Stick around, check out my website because I'll also have my Patreon, my Discord, all of that stuff, even reviews and stuff posted there. So would really appreciate if y'all tagged along, pop something while you're at it. Your support is gonna help run this channel. And let's get back to the video. Deuces. Let's go over some details about the mouse before we get into the gaming experience. Firstly, my hands are 20 by 10 centimeters, and the way I grip the mouse is a relaxed claw, palm claw grip hybrid. The mouse itself has a nice, soft texture to it. Only issue is when my hands get sweaty, they do start to slip a little more, and the coating does pick up a little bit more dirt. Now, with that being said, the tensioning on the clicks are fantastic. On the main buttons, I love it, and the side buttons are also very well done. The back side button has maybe a little bit of post travel, but nothing for me to be like concerned. 
and the scroll wheel is great as well. These stock feet by Lambs of Atlantis are phenomenal. They are some of the best that I've used that are not core pads. I really like them. Another thing to mention is the extreme beveling that Lamzu have added on the base of this mouse. Though it might look aesthetically pleasing and nice, it makes the mouse feel like it is wobbling on flat surfaces, when in reality it's just that aggressive curving on the bottom of the mouse. The software for the Lamzu Atlantis is also very simple. The first page has all your bindings for the mouse itself, the second page shows DPI settings and profiles, and the last page is for macros. When it comes to tactical FPS shooters like CSGO and Valorant, I've had a really good time. Being able to click on people's heads precisely, flick, it's been a charm. Overall, for those types of games, it's going to be really good. When it comes to tracking games like Apex Legends and Fortnite, again, when it comes to tracking people, I've done it with ease. I've had a good time overall. And I have nothing but praise to say in that regard too. And then we have MOBA games like League of Legends, if that's your cup of tea. And it's a really good shape for those games too. It'll keep your hand engaged and you'll enjoy it. But it's not all sunshine and roses. And the reason I say that is because when I grip the mouse in the hybrid grip, I find that though it is in my hand snug, there is this index finger sized space between the palm and the mouse. This causes a lot of strain in my lower palm area as well as my wrist area, which makes it not viable for longer gaming durations. I also find the soreness to spread to my my muscle under my thumb and my index fingers. So overall, I find that this mouse is not viable for longer gaming sessions. It really is a personalized issue to my hand and the way I grip the mouse. If I was more of a fingertip gripper, I think that the issues that I have with soreness wouldn't really be a thing. And also, if I was a palm gripper, I wouldn't really have these issues. But I can't really palm grip this mouse as it just slips out from the base of my hand. I think that for a majority of people, if you have larger hands or even medium-sized hands, you're going to have a great time with this mouse. And I think that it is just a fantastic performer especially with that 3395 sensor. Let's now compare it to some other popular gaming mice in the scene. First up, we have the Endgame Gear XM1 versus the Lambs of Atlantis. Both humps do look relatively similar, but in reality, when it comes to gripping the mice, they feel significantly different in the hand. As you see, the mouse buttons are very different on the two mice. Now, when it comes to the grip style, the Lambs of Atlantis causes a spacing in the back of my palm. However, the XM1's shape allows my palm to truly fit into the mouse. This is because of the way the hump is created on the XM1, which slopes down significantly more at the end versus the Lamzo Atlantis, which leaves a little bigger of a hump. This lower hump profile on the XM1 is the real reason why that fits in my hand snug without causing too much strain. The higher, more pronounced hump on the Atlantis, though subtle, is significant enough to cause fatigue in my hand when gaming. Let's now go to the Pulsar X2 versus the Lamzo Atlantis. These two shapes are significantly different. As you can see here, the Pulsar X2 is significantly shorter than the Lamzo Atlantis. You could even consider it a little stubby in comparison. The hump design on the Atlantis is far more pronounced and elongated versus the X2s, which cuts off a little shorter, allowing it to be more engaged in my palm when gaming. This also does not cause the fatigue that the Lambda Atlantis does. And now we have the G Pro Wireless versus the Atlantis. The GPX is the potato shape, and we all know it. The clicks on the Lambda Atlantis feel significantly more premium than the G Pro Wireless. It's a shame that the clicks on the G Pro Wireless feel this way. I really am not a fan of it. The skates are a little bigger on the G Pro Wireless, and the length of the two mice are are relatively similar. However, the profile of the Lambs of Atlantis is higher hump on the center, which slopes down versus the GPRO wireless, which keeps the hump shape throughout the whole mouse. This shape is more comfortable in my hand in comparison to the Lambs of Atlantis's, but the clicks are not as premium. Do I recommend the Lambs of Atlantis? Yeah, I do. I think the Miami colorway is dope. I think the other colorways that they have are also awesome. They have the basic black colorway. Then they also have some fun ones like the Miami colorway the pink colorway, as well as the matcha green colorway. I've never seen a mouse in that greenish color. It's very nice, different too. And then also a simple white colorway. At the $90 price point, I think that Lamzu have really created something with a lot of passion. And I was following this project through their Reddit updates. And I have to say, I think that they have knocked it out of the park. This is a mouse that a lot of people will enjoy. Unfortunately for me, it didn't work out, but it's still a mouse that I would confidently say do check out. If you enjoyed this review, hit the like button, subscribe button down below. 